everyone, I'm Liz Brown Swanson and welcome to Around the Peninsula. It is a gorgeous day here in Rancho Palos Verdes. Lots to share in this program starting right here at the beautiful historic Wayfarers Chapel where they're having their annual art show. And later on in the program, we're going to go right across the street to Abalone Cove where volunteers are cleaning up for Earth Day. And we're going to end right down the coast at the Interpretive Center where we're going to meet the goats. But for now, let's start right here at the Art Show, where artists and the community are coming together to celebrate art and all the beauty that this chapel brings. Tell us what's here at the annual Art Show. What's here for the community? We have um, candles. We have art. We have um, succulents. We have um, jewelry. A little bit of everything. Why are you putting this on? What, what, what is your, your goal here? the goal of the art show is to just reach out to the community and get people here and to have a good time and just um, to let people know that we're here and we want people to visit us. And of course being at the chapel you feel like you're in your paint in a painting right so it doesn't get any more beautiful than this this landscape here. Talk about how a lot of the artists are celebrating the art that's right here being you know with paintings of the chapel etc. Yeah we have a lot of artists that do have um, renderings of the chapel and stuff and um, the ocean and we kind of have an Earth Day theme going today too so it kind of all bent, blends together. And along with the art you're gonna have some poetry this year and also some yoga. Yes that's new this year we're having yoga at 12 o'clock with Uni right in front of the chapel on the beautiful lawn and then after that we're having the poetry readings in the chapel and we have some amazing poets coming published poets Michael Colum, just going to be great. <laughs> well, you're not here. You're working in the visitor center. I think last year I was told there was a half a million visitors that came through the visitor center. Just talk about when, when people come. What do you share with them about the chapel? We try to share the history. We try to share about the architecture and the concept and just how it all ended up here. And what do you love most about the art show? This is your second time putting the art show together. Yes, I love I love everything about it. I love the planning. I love the artists. The artists are amazing. I'm so lucky to have the artists that we have here today. This is an absolute treat to be here with one of the Peninsula's renowned artists, Don Crocker, while you are at work. So what are you working on, Don? Well, I'm working on a painting of uh, Palos Verdes, uh, the uh, Abalone Cove area. And um, it's very, very low tide. So I've got to work hard on this painting to get it to really show how low tide it is because you can see a lot of people down there. If you, if you, if you scoot down, you can see a lot of people enjoying the tide pools down there right now. What do you enjoy most about working here at the chapel and, and being part of this art show? For a number of years, I've come here and painted from all around and out, uh, out, at the, out in front of the chapel. And it's just a very, very beautiful spot. So, uh, and, and it changes every time. The, Tides high, tides low, clouds, wind, whatever it is, makes it, makes it interesting. And I think it's lovely that they do this art show every year and uh, invite artists and have a lot of people coming to enjoy the, the, the arts. It's a gorgeous day. It's Earth Day. It's Art by the Sea Day. And uh, the, the community involvement, seeing all the people, the excitement uh, on the way here, just, you know, everyone's out and about and uh, there's the fun time to come up here on the grounds and see all these new faces, people enjoying the day, the grounds, the art, and uh, well, pe faces I haven't seen in a while, so it's, uh, it's community building uh, peace and I, and I love that excitement. It's energizing everyone. Wayfarers Chapel means so much to so many. I think you had over half a million visitors last year. People come here for all reasons, life celebrations, worship services, the art show today. Just talk a little bit about just the role that you feel like this chapel plays in our, in our community. Sure, you know, I think it's kind of a, an unofficial spiritual center for many people, even if they don't come here on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. Every Sunday, you, they still come here to, uh, whether it's out of town guests, if it's uh, someone's had a busy day, they can come on the grounds and that sense of peace and the sacred is something that, uh, you know, I, I feel like it needs to continue to be cultivated here. It doesn't just happen on its own. So uh, containing, you know, helping to maintain that and just be a good custodian of the sacredness that's already here is part of what I see my role as the director of ministry here. What do you think of the show? Oh, it's very cool. It's great to see some local artists, especially when a lot of the subjects are local places, and it's uh, just beautiful and very unique. 
Yeah, I love how everyone has like a different art style and you can really see their passion with what they're doing and yeah, I'm really enjoying this art show. Yeah, I've enjoyed it. It's been really great looking at all the art around here and hearing everyone's story and like how their art style comes around and stuff. And of course, being right here on the beautiful historic Wayfair Chapel grounds, what, what does this place mean to you when you come here? I know you said you're local. Yeah, I'm local. Uh, yeah, so I went to Paul Zordes High School, so I drove down this street like every morning for like four years straight. So like seeing it, I've never actually been up here. So this is my first time up here in person looking at it. So it's like really beautiful, a lot more beautiful than just a quick drive by that I usually do. <laughs> Yeah, I, I love the architecture here. I love how they incorporate like the wood and the glass, but it fits in with the nature perfectly. It just blends right in. But yeah, it's gorgeous. It's my first time here, too. I only followed, I think, their Instagram account. <laughs> and when I saw that you guys had this art show, or um, I was instantly like, let's go. And now we're here. Yeah, and of course, the architect was this, you know, the son of Frank Lloyd Wright, the famous architect um, Lloyd Wright Jr. So it's a pretty special place. Yeah, I mean, I've definitely always seen it online. I think a coworker got married here, and so it just it was nice to finally have a reason to come up and see it myself, and it's beautiful. This is your first time at the art show. You brought your beautiful photographs. Tell us about your work. Well, um, one of the reasons why I'm in PV is because I just love the scenery, and so once in a while I would go out and just take recreational pictures. And when I was invited to come here, I thought, what can I do to make something a little bit more special? So I brought up that big lens and tried to get some really sharp images. And that's how we came up with these photos. And of course, yeah. the um, legendary lighthouse in Regia Palace Verdes, how was that to go out and shoot? I just love lighthouses. I, I think it's just one of those landmarks that just, you know, just sits well with me. And luckily we have one here, so, so that's like my number one. That's a lot of things to shoot here. And I that's, know. That's I, my, how about photographing the chapel? I need a different lens for that because the chapel needs a wide angle. I, I have to ask about this, this camera lens. What is going on? It's, I've never, it's, it's quite lens, magnificent. Yeah, this lens actually ends here, but the rest is uh, just a cover for the sun. Um, but it's a 600 millimeter lens, and most people actually use it for sports photography because you get really close up to the uh, to the players. And you said yeah. you're a dentist in your other life. This is a hobby? This is a hobby. I've been a dentist for 18 years and uh, you know I love my career but at the same time I gotta have a hobby too. I'm Joyce Carroll. I'm the jewelry artist and this is a happy birthday present for... <laughs> what did you buy? I'm Colleen. I'm from Seattle and this is my sister. She bought it for me for my birthday which is April 25th. It is absolutely special. Describe the art Thank here. You. So this is a nautilus shell that's been made in Indonesia. They've used red resin to make it red. That's not the natural color. And then I strung it with crystals and put a sterling silver toggle clasp on the end. And happy birthday to you, Colleen. What brings you here? Thank you. I came to visit my sister's daughter, Farah, who lives here. And how beautiful to be here at the chapel. Absolutely. Have you been to the art show before? Never, and, I, and we're here to see the chapel too. We just got an extra benefit with uh, this little show here going on. I'm now being joined by Margie and Mary, two veterans of the chapel. Both used to work here, both part of the art show. How does it feel to have it back here on the grounds? Oh, I am so glad it's back. It needed to come back, and we need to be out here for the community too. Ditto. What else can I say? What do you enjoy about this art show and what's here? Everything. We love the artists that come from all over, and. We'll probably have more next year, too. Um, it just, the, just the community coming in is what's really fun. And seeing old friends. I mean, I used to work here for 15 years. I am now retired. And a lot of the people that I see today are friends that I used to know when I was working here. But it brings a lot of people from the community in. And that's what I like the best. Uh, there's always events going on. There's concerts in the chapel. Today we have poetry reading. We have yoga out on the front lawn, demonstrations for free today. We have rock painting over here for the kids for free today. And they get to take their rocks home with them. So there's, and there's always things going on at the chapel. I'm being joined by local artist Trish McCoy, celebrating your great work and being here at the art show. What do you enjoy most about this show now that they've brought it back? The setting and the people, it's just a lot of fun. I, I really enjoy it. What do you, describe some of your work that you brought with you. Yeah, I brought jewelry, prints, and some original paintings that are mixed media collage. And the one you're holding now, you picked out. Tell us a little bit about that painting. This painting is a collage and acrylic. It's um, paper painted and then many, many layers of acrylic. A lot of work. It's great to be here with local artist Catherine Stennis, another art show here at the chapel. What do you enjoy about this event? 
Oh, I love all the people here. And of course, the environment at this chapel is so beautiful. The gardens are spectacular. And it's so much fun to be out in the air doing an art show. I just love it. And of course, this beautiful, glorious setting right across from Abalone Cove. You're a painter. You're a plein air painter. You paint these landscapes. What's it like to go out and paint here on the hill? Oh, I feel it's, I'm very blessed. For one thing, this is the most beautiful place to paint. There are so many things to, of, of, you can go to the botanical gardens, you can go along the cliffs. You know, I love painting in the cliffs. And of course, the lighthouse, I've probably painted a hundred times. And they're always different. I know, the lighting. And you're standing in front of a painting you just said you did last week, which is by Forrestal. Talk yeah. about that painting. Yeah. Yeah, there was a walk for the uh, Land Conservatory, and they have a few artists come, and I happen to be one of them. And I painted this painting behind me uh, of the cliffs there, and I had a wonderful time because was, I was there about 10 o'clock in the morning, and the shadows were perfect, so I got some beautiful shadows. But if you notice, I took the roadway out. Where I was standing was a road. I took it out and created a pathway and created the bushes and whatnot. What inspires you to... Um to paint and you said you've been an artist since you were a kid yeah I don't know it's something within me I just have to create I just love it I'm the happiest you know when I'm creating you will see me sitting there with a big smile on my face all the time and you're sharing your talents you said you you, you teach here on the hill yes I have a studio and I teach uh, children from the ages of nine all the way up through adults and they get a private lesson in a group environment because everybody learns at a different speed. Some are slower and some are faster, but they can all get there if they take the time and, you know, work with, with, with me. And I can get them to do a very nice painting or a drawing. I teach drawing as well. As we're here at the chapel, obviously celebrating with local artists. This is actually Earth Day. Um, what do you find so incredible about being right here on the grounds at the Wayfarers? Well, this, it's a spectacular place to be. And I have to tell you, I came here when I lived in New York when I was 18 years old. And they were building this place. And I came here and looked out. They were, this room was, a, uh, there were windows here at the time. I looked out the window and saw this cliff and, and I was touched. And I said, oh, this is such a beautiful place to live. I want to live here. So I wish I could live here someday. And look at me today. How I found my way from Long Island all the way to this place. And here I am today painting this cliff and painting the chapel is amazing to me. Oh, I've bought recycled bottles. That's, I think, the my favorite thing about today because, you know, it's Earth Day and everything. So I've taken recycled soda bottles and cider bottles and wine bottles and I've painted them so you can use them for vases. Some people like to drill holes in them and use them for incense. I personally like the vases better. Is this your first time participating in the art show? It is. It is my first year participating. It's a great vibe, a great feel. So I'm really excited to be here. And as a first timer, it's like I feel like family already. So. And, and to be in, on the chapel grounds and in the chapel, I don't know if you've come here and experienced the chapel before. I have. Actually, my parents were married here about 43 years ago. So, you know, as a kid, I've been brought here multiple times. So, yeah. It's just so peaceful, the Serenity Garden. The glass church when you when Reverend Brown is giving a sermon, you can see sometimes the birds just flying by. You watch the squirrels run around the tree. Just so peaceful and lovely to be here. And they do a lot of special events like the art show. What do you enjoy about a day like today? You get to see local vendors out here enjoy the peaceful artwork, and then especially it's by the sea, so you get to see a lot of it. What a fabulous art show. You can find out all about the events and worship services right here at the chapel by logging on to wayfareschapel.org. Now there's more to come here on Around the Peninsula. We're going to travel just across the street to Abalone Cove where volunteers are cleaning up for Earth Day. There's two separate groups. There's a group down at Abalone Cove Beach that are picking up trash on who are picking up trash on the beach, and then there's a separate group which is doing gardening, and we're mulching, and creating new paths for uh, runners. You're making Abalone Cove a prettier place to be. Why do you love coming to this beach? I love coming to this beach just because I've been going to it ever since I was little, and I hate to see trash on it, and I just, I like to clean it up and see it like as nice as it can be. And of course, here we here, here on Earth Day, why is this really important? How can we focus to keep our environment, you know, cleaning it? 
the most important part is just prevention instead of um, like the effects of it. So every it's obviously just like picking up your trash, not throwing it, and that's why we're here. If you if we could prevent that from happening, then we wouldn't have to be here. We're out here because we needed extra credit for marine biology, but we also wanted to come somewhere close to our house and help out around here. Why, why does Earth Day matter to you? I think it's extremely important because we need to conserve this Earth because it's the only one we have and we're currently ruining it, so I think we should all be doing our part to help make it a better place. Of course, living here in Palos Verdes is very pristine and beautiful. What do you enjoy most about nature and the environment right here in your back door? Uh, I just really like the diversity of life that lives around here in the trails. I think they're all really great because you don't really find that anywhere else, and you see people from L.A. coming up here just to visit that. So. We have a monthly uh, volunteer cleanup day, and what we have is uh, a whole, we are getting more and more volunteers every month. So what we have is a third of the people are down at the beach cleaning up, and then we had a third of the volunteers laying mulch on the trails up here, and now we've got a third of the volunteers trimming um, some of the trails back uh, with hedge clippers and stuff. For you, the efforts just to kind of keep this park pristine, um, it's always a challenge. It is always a challenge, and we are pretty uh, obsessive about picking up trash because what we notice is the more trash that is on the ground, more is generated. I mean, if we have no trash, nobody leaves trash. It's, it's incredible. And how much do you think we'll get hauled out of here today? How much of an impact takes place on a day like today? We had three Girl Scout troops last week, and they brought back 15 buckets. So today, I'm not really sure. It all depends on the tides. For you, why is Earth Day so important, and what do you think the takeaways are on a day like today for all of us? We, got, we need to be good stewards of what God left us, and to, we, that means taking care of it in a variety of ways. And there's a lot of different ways you can do it. And if you can't help, go out and appreciate it. And, and back to helping, um, there are, you're saying there's volunteer effort, uh, efforts here every month. People, if they want to sign up, what should they do? Uh, they can contact City Hall, call the Parks and Rec. We have volunteer days at each park uh, throughout the entire year. Here at Abalone Cove, we have them once a month. All right, a big thank you to all the volunteers who came up to clean Abalone Cove today. Now there's still more to come here on Around the Peninsula. We're going to travel right up our beautiful coast to the Point Vicente Interpretive Center to meet the goats. So fun to meet you here at Meet the Goats. What do you enjoy about today? Just meeting the goats and having the opportunity to feed them and run around with them a little bit. We've got about 200 goats in here today. Uh, most of them are mothers with their kids and uh, Looks like we have even more people than goats out here, actually. Of course, this is, a, this is a fun day for the goats, but they're here to work in our community. Talk about the role that the goats serve in terms of, you know, um, reducing fire hazards, et cetera, out there cleaning all the brush. Right. Well, the city of RPV hires us every year, and it's a really important job of clearing the fire break for the homes. Just in case there's a fire, the goats eat down all the vegetation and make sure that, you know, in the off chance that there is a fire that they'll be protected. And you said this year you didn't have to bring as uh, as many goats because it, the what, there wasn't as much uh, brush to clear. Yes, yeah, I, I think probably due to the lack of rain there wasn't nearly as much brush as last year, say, and uh, we had to reduce our herd by about half the amount. Let's share some goat tips, goat facts. I think it's always fun to learn out here about the goats and be educated, so give us a few fun ones. Well, I mean, <laughs> For starters, goat meat, surprisingly, actually, is the most eaten meat in the world, actually. And I, I never would have guessed that before I got into this. And they're one of the oldest domesticated animals that humans have ever worked with. It's great. I love goats, and uh, my family was originally from a farm, so I got, I'm kind of weak for, for that kind of animals, you know. So can't have them in my backyard, but I like them. <laughs> have you had a chance to feed? Have you had a chance to feed the goats? No, uh, but when he said that, I thought I know he wants to find a way to sneak a goat in our backyard. <laughs> well, meet the goats. I mean, this year was probably record-breaking. I would say we probably had up to a thousand people. We expanded parking much more than in the past. Um, but yeah, as you can see, it's probably one of the community's favorite events. What do you love about Meet the Goats? I just love that it brings everybody out, family, grandparents, you know, adults, everyone has a good time. So it's just really nice to see everyone come together and kind of just get such a thrill out of interacting with them. It's educational. Right behind us, we have the, um, they're doing a demonstration and um, with Michael. So talk a little bit about what, what he's trying to show the community. 
Yeah, so they have the herding dog, and so we did two demonstrations today at 11.45 and 1. So right now it's going on, and the dog will go around and kind of herd the goats together, and that makes it easy when they have to transport and kind of corral them up. And Michael talked about just the role that they serve in our community, the way they help with um, the brush clearance. They're, they do a lot of work for us here in RPV. Yeah, I think one more perfect today. Today's Earth Day, and they're really here. They're a natural way to kind of get rid of those invasive brush and plants that are just kind of irritants, and we don't want here and help prevent, you know, any fires from starting. They do a lot with the city, all the special events. You're here at the Interpretive Center. Talk about how important it is, um, what goes on right here every day at PVIC. Yeah, I mean, right now we still have the whale watching going on, so that's popular. Uh, coming up on May 19th, we have Kids to Parks Day, so we're doing some activities here at PVIC and as well as at the Ladera Linda Community Center. So we're always trying to do something fun and something where everyone can kind of just come out and enjoy our beautiful environment. Last question, any special goat fact you want to share with the community? <laughs> goat fact? Well, today we have about 200 goats here, and a baby goat is called a kid. They come in all different shapes and sizes and colors. Um, talk a little bit about the variety of goats that we're looking at. Oh, I mean, this is a pretty mixed herd. Like, it's not your traditional herd, but most of them are boar goats. Those are the brown head, white body. Then we also have a few cashmere goats mixed in there. Those are the kind of longer haired looking goats. There was one milk goat, and uh, there were, there's a few of the Spanish breed of goat with a black head, white body. Do you have a favorite goat out here today or most popular? Um, I would say Josefina. She was a bottle fed baby from early this year and she is super friendly with people. Now with Emily and Shreya and they found the most popular goat, Josefina. What do you like about the goat? Ah, that he has the horns. <laughs> you like the horns and it, the, is the goat soft? Yeah, it's very soft and colorful. And what do you like about this day of meeting the goats? Well, it's a playful day where we could play with the goats. And Honestly, what I feel when I work with my goats is that I'm restoring the health of the earth. And so I feel like it's actually really proper that this occurred on Earth Day. Because I feel like I'm trying to fix the earth. I'm trying to make it a better place, one goat at a time, if you will. <laughs> Right, we're going to wrap up this edition of Around the Peninsula. How fun being here with the goats. They clearly like being on camera. Not a bad way to spend the day. Thanks for joining me. I'm Liz Brown Swanson. See you next time.